Hey, I'm Gabriel Iglesias. That's Gabriel Iglesias if you have an accent. And my last meal would be a grilled cheese on wheat with Spam and a six pack of Diet Coke, cause why not? Uh, pastrami, uh, chili cheese fries, bacon wrapped chili cheese dogs, and a key lime pie with Rocky Road ice cream for dessert. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today we're joined by one of the funniest, most prolific, successful comedians of all time. You can catch his sold out Dodger Stadium special, Stadium Fluffy on Netflix now. He's also the co-star of the Magic Mike series. Gabriel Iglesias, welcome to your last meal. Nice. <laughs> We all gotta eat, we all gotta die. That's that's pretty much it right there. And that's and yes, is. yes, for the record I was in Magic Mike. I know it sounds uh like more like he was, but no, I was I was the only one that didn't get naked. I it's auditioned. Gone. I think you took my spot actually. That's probably what happened yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. That's right. They had affirmative action. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, have you ever thought about your last meal before? Have I ever thought about my last meal? Every time I get drunk and I and I go to a hit a fast food restaurant at two o'clock in the morning somewhere on the road. Um, you know, I think everyone has had that conversation because mm. at one point in time you wind up watching some documentary and they're showing people on death row and it's like, ooh, you always hear those stories of like, mm -hmm. what did they eat? You know, what was their final meal? And so then you guys <laughs> hit me up and I'm like, wow, I really had to think about it. Because everything that's on this menu are all things that I would normally have, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the week, but never all at the same time. But it's a great so. kind of self-reflection exercise, like some of the cereal. Oh yeah, I'm, right? I, after today, I'm gonna totally look at myself differently and, and hopefully I make it home okay. Otherwise, the irony. We've yet to have an actual guest die, but we were just talking, like statistically it's gonna happen one day. I don't think it's gonna be on show number 14 or seven or 25 or whatever this is, uh, but statistically it's gonna happen. That would suck, right? <laughs> it, just, he died on his way home from his last meal. It'd be great for views, I'm just saying, it'd be great for our views. Like it'd be bad, but like if it's already gonna happen, it's like, do you believe in- Predicting it, man, this would be like a Simpson episode. <laughs> How often do you think about death in general? You know what, I think it, it, uh, it comes across my mind at least once a day. You know, it has to, to remind you mm -hmm. of uh, how important life is and what, what you know, what, what's important to you. Yeah, so you don't think of that as like a depressing thing, but it's actually a very life-affirming thing. Uh, a little bit of the two. <laughs> you ready to get in the meal? I'm ready to get in the meal. This Let's is exciting. Let's do this. Let's eat. <laughs> All right, Gabriel, for your first course today, you have the fried Spam grilled cheese sandwich on wheat bread, some American cheese, some cheddar cheese, best of both worlds, and then a six pack of Diet Coke. Turns out they only make six packs in the mini cans now. Uh, it's BS. Shrinkflation, man. It's that's, happening. That's funny that I, I have not seen the actual plastic that goes around mm -hmm. the cans in so it's been a long time. We're killing three sea I've turtles with each other. I, I know, I know, right? Because that's the main reason. Like you don't see them a yeah. whole lot now because uh, you know plastic's bad for the environment. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, you know if it's my last meal, I don't really care. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, you care enough to have diet coke in your last meal. This is your last meal. You're, I mean, you're you're going into the grave immediately after this. Like we have a plot for you in our Burbank parking lot. Nice. You know, it's not where you wanted to go, but it's where you're going. <laughs> Why diet coke? Even, you know what, even if it was uh, uh, the actual last, last, literally, mm. like that's it, for some reason, I like the taste of it. Yeah. I actually yeah. enjoy the taste of it. So if you were to give me a regular Coke, it would taste like, oh, it'd be too much, it would be overload on the sugar. Yeah, yeah. I would feel like I need to add water to it or something. Or you, get accustomed, you get accustomed to the chemical taste of Diet Coke and the body craves it, because it wants to be like preserved from the inside out. For some reason, yeah, I know. That's why people don't realize it. Like, you know, I'm actually like uh, 73, but I, I look 37, because uh, <laughs> preservatives, man, GMOs, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. My insides are very old, but outside I'm so pretty. Shiny and so new. So pretty, <laughs> shine bright like a diamond. Tell me about so, the, the grilled cheese. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you that I'm about to uh, eat it, because yeah, it's yeah. here, it's in front of me. It's a grilled cheese sandwich and it's made with spam now some people don't like spam because they're like that's like a bologna 2.0 uh -huh. but i grew up on it you know Same. it's one of those things where it just it's not just a, a nice salty meaty flavor for me but it's memories of a childhood of mm -hmm. a good time you know i had i had a great childhood yeah and so yeah uh -huh. um, oh oh mom God. see mm, good times spam does what ham simply can't or won't or refuses to do and i don't care Oh my God, it's like a fun version of Hot Ones. Uh, that was you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, no one's on fire. This is very comfortable. It's, it's fun. It's a better table. I love your questions. My, I'm, not, I'm not bleeding. This is way better. All you gotta do is answer questions about death. That's right, like, you don't gotta eat spicy food. You just gotta indulge me in my weird morbid fantasies. No, no problem, I can talk about death and eat spam. It's all good. Oh, yeah. I was gonna ask you what you think happens when you die, but you already died. Because I read on the internet, and you can't fake things on the internet, I read on the internet, and 30 million other people did too, that you died from diabetes complications. And then, and then, 
you came back from the grave because the manager wanted you to make more specials. Um, I guess that first of all, it's a sign that you've uh, you've achieved certain level uh, of status. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the uh, the internet killed me. Um, I want to say what ten years ago. I think it's about ten years ago. Yeah, it, it was my first ever death hoax, and um, <laughs> not the last. Well, no, I've actually had like three, maybe four. But after the first couple, you say, ah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll die again next year. It's cool. <laughs> I got to read a lot of comments. And met some people, like, oh, my God, it was so touching. Like, like he did this for my family and so much happiness mm -hmm. and joy. And then there was others, like, that were like, oh, it's about time. You know, yeah, it was only a matter of time. That, that dude was, you know, he was on borrowed time, man. <laughs> <laughs> you actually said something really touching on Facebook about the death hoax, and I want to read it to you. Uh, you said, if this has taught me anything, it's that I need to enjoy more moments in my life and not get so stressed out about things I can't change, especially with myself. I have people who care about me that I made happy in my life, and in the end, that's all that's really gonna matter. You stand by that? Yes, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm a beautiful person. You, you are a beautiful person. Feel, I felt that, I'm like, wow, that's not, yeah, I wrote that, that's me, that came from me. You also said that uh, when you do die, you're gonna buy multiple plots next to each other so you can stretch your legs when you die, and that to me is really smart. You don't want to die in like the Spirit Airlines of graves. No, you want to, yeah, right, where you have like an extra for the headstone, an extra mm -hmm. for the freaking, because they'll upsell you. Because that's one thing my mom did. She didn't want anyone to mess up her funeral. And so she went in on her own and did the plot, selected a coffin, selected everything, of the flowers. She did everything. And I thought that was pretty hardcore. Like she did not want anyone to mess it up. How long before she passed did she do that? I'd say about a year. Damn. Yeah. Um, my dad did the same thing. He literally was going in for surgery, but it wasn't, you know, a thing where he thought he was gonna die, but just in case, went to a funeral home, got a quote for $1,500, and in the hospital thing that you have to sign, it said, do not pay more than $1,500 from this place. Your dad was cut hustling. He was cutting he was deals. Hustling. I mean, he was hustling. He was cutting deals. Your mom knew exactly what she wanted, and she got it, man. Oh, so then another part of me was like, well, shoot, maybe I should just get cremated. If I get cremated, then, you know, uh, they'll put me in a, you know, whatever, an mm -hmm. urn, right, or a box or something mm -hmm. cool. And then I figured, um, leave me by where my cars are. Like, I got a collection of cars mm -hmm. and Volkswagens and stuff, and I figure if they leave my ashes there, they can charge admission, and it'll be like Mexican Graceland, you know? Like, <laughs> these, are, these are Fluffy's cars. This is where Fluffy would blow it up in the bathroom. This is the, the gym Fluffy barely used, and here's Fluffy himself. You wanna hold it? <laughs> People can take selfies with the urn, and you know? <laughs> and you're always out here hustling, But, man. but at even least this way. Right. Yeah, even in, even in death, man. You gotta find, a, find an angle, so I don't know. Okay, but course number two, we got the pastrami chili cheese fries. This is like a Southern California diner classic. We got fresh double fried fries. Uh, we have a chili made with chorizo, homemade spice blend, all that good stuff. Got some simple mild cheddar cheese on there. And then of course some pastrami that's been braised and it's some jus right on top. I wish you guys could smell how awesome this is. This, there's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's really good. And I, I wasn't sure if we were, we were gonna be able to top that grilled cheese with Spam. That grilled cheese with Spam was legit. It was so delicious. It was really, really good. I am, ooh, this it's most fun I've I've had doing a show. <laughs> Please, man, dig in. This we got cool. the share plates. Yeah, all go right. Go to town, man. go to town. Tell me, tell me about why this is on your last meal. Like, is this a special dish to you? You grew up eating it? Well, um, this is actually, you know, I did, I did not grow up eating Ch uh, chili cheese pastrami mm -hmm. fries. Uh, this is something I learned about later in life. Um, one of my favorite restaurants to visit is a, a restaurant called The Hat. Yes, and, sir. Uh, here in LA and some of the best chili cheese fries. I'll take a drive over there to The Hat, usually, uh, you know, right around midnight, which is probably not the best time to be eating food like this. No, but, that's the best time to be eating food like this. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's what Tums are for. So I take my dogs with me and they're all about this pastrami life. So it's, it's kind of, um, everybody gets a treat. You're feeding and, your dogs pastrami? You know what, say what you want. My dog, I got one dog that's 17 and the other one is like 14. So yeah, people say all the time, you shouldn't feed them human food. I'm like, well, your organic dog is dead and my GMO <laughs> dog is still alive, so. Like if like one grain of food like falls on the ground, she's like the cat's gonna eat it. I'm like the cat, it's the cat eats his own poop. There's nothing in the world that you can eat that is worse than feces, and the cat's doing that on the daily. He's gonna be fine. Mm. 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 No, I gotta go Diet Coke for Diet Coke with you. Diet Coke for Diet Coke. This is yeah. sign of respect. Salud. Salud. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Gabriel. That was really rude. 
As a host, I gotta be more professional. I wasn't, it sounded like burp, vomit. I wasn't sure what was about to happen right there. I'm like, oh, he's about to ruin the show. I feel like a lot of people think of you as a very happy-go-lucky guy, and you certainly are. You bring a lot of joy on stage, but do you think you're deceptively darker than people give you credit for? I got my moments. Yeah. I think, I'd like to think for the most part, I'm a very, you know, easygoing, happy-go-lucky guy, mm. but things do stress me out. Sure. And, um, you know, we all have our ways of dealing. Mm -hmm. Clearly, food has been one of those ways of dealing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like listening to music, and I just get in my own thoughts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I know that in a room full of people, I'm probably the quietest one. Interesting. Yeah, and and you know I'm not that comic. There's a lot of comics that don't stop mm -hmm. talking. They just want to be the center of attention the whole time, and they're just loud and over yeah. the top, and that's annoying as shit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know if I'm not. That's a long. That's annoying as ship. We need ships. They bring in our products into the ports. Support yes. your local sh ship. Yeah, because mm -hmm. ship happens. Um, <laughs> I I enjoy listening. I think you you learn a lot more from from shutting up than yeah. by trying to be the, the one running your mouth all the time. You talk about being diagnosed with diabetes and you switch to a low carb diet. You said you still eat fast food, you still get a double cheeseburger, maybe three, take off the bun, take off the ketchup, and people say, isn't cholesterol gonna kill you? And you say, yeah, that'll get me in 10 years, diabetes is gonna get me in two, I'm winning by eight years. What do you think about people who want to live a long life but not a happy life, and how do you find that medium? Every day I'm reminded because of medication that I take, mm -hmm. or for example, like I wear this, which measures my blood sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. I did not bring my sugar meter with me because I knew <laughs> what I was about to do today. Sorry about that. And, and why, why torture myself? You know, I, I know that as soon as I walk in the door, when I get home, that thing's gonna be screaming at me. He's like, "What were you? I thought you died." <laughs> I think it's like Kevin Hart. Do they give your blood sugar monitor, Kevin Hart? Stuff? Right. That'd be a good product, man. I'd buy that. <laughs> like when you got diagnosed with diabetes, a doctor told you you had two years to live. What were your like? I think actual... he was just trying to scare me because I'm like, really, dude? How can you, know, you like, how can you guess? Like I saw the guys in the hallway waiting. You know, I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah, if I if I got two years, they're they're, they're dead in five minutes. <laughs> but did it work? Like, what were the emotions that you felt? When I you think that? initially the scare tactic. Yeah, that's when I was off camera. We're talking about how I did yoga for a year. Mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was during that time where I'm like, okay, you know, because I did lose a hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. You look so, great. By and the way. so, oh, thank you. That's I mean, right. You're sitting up straight. But... That's you know, but um. I, I have had you know ups and downs, and I think that out of everything in life, the only goal I have not been able to meet has been losing weight. Mm -hmm. And so when people say, well, you know, what's next in life? Well, you know, sure, maybe I'll lose weight. Like really? But if you if you lose weight, you might not be funny. I'm like, oh, eat man. a d I gotta spend this money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, sorry, yeah, you're yeah. probably gonna edit that out. Eat eat a eat a dictionary. Eat a dictionary. Dictionaries yeah. are important because yeah. people need to that's literacy right. is key. Uh -huh. And the Gabriel Iglesias they, Literacy that's right. Foundation. So eat a dictionary. Do you feel like uh, pressured to change that to like set an example? I know this is like a really kind of like tricky subject, and like you aren't obligated to do anything. But do you ever feel like that? Um, I do feel like I'm not getting any younger, and yeah, yeah. I feel like I am now. Before I could I could have that argument where I'm like, ah, I'm in my 20s, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm in my 30s, I'm all right. And then I'm reading like, you know, when do people start having heart attacks and issues mm -hmm. with this and that? And I'm like, ah, I'm there. So uh, <laughs> I'm I'm looking at it a little bit differently now. And so mm -hmm. for some reason now I find myself up late at night watching videos about intermittent fasting and and how the the benefits of a low sugar diet and this and that. I'm like, oh god, really? It is so much easier for me to get up in front of thousands of people and tell stories and be vulnerable than to freaking check my diet. And I think mm. that's the craziest thing. I'm like, why does food have such control over me? And, I, and every week I always meet personal trainers mm -hmm. and, and uh, nutritionists that they, they want to get to me and they're like, I can help you. I can teach you how to lose weight. I'm like, mm. I don't lack an education. I know how to lose weight. Yeah. I know how to lose weight. You know, uh -huh. so I know what to do. So I don't like the education. I like the motivation. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I'm, I'm missing. So I've gotten so obsessed with working out that I'm standing up in between takes, stretching my back, that I'm gonna need a spinal fusion surgery to fix. And I've replaced one addiction with another. I need more diet coke. I feel you. Ooh, Gabriel, course number three. Sorry, we got the Wagyu bacon wrapped hot dog covered in chili and cheese. Nice little soft hot dog brioche bun. It's like a little bit fancy, but but really keeps the spirit and integrity, man. And I see the smile on your face and it makes me excited. Oh man, I, I just gotta say, this is my favorite show ever. Yes, yes. <laughs> Gabriel, that's what I'm talking this, about, man. This, this has been the most awesome experience. It's like, 
You know, it, it's nice uh, when you show up to a show and, and you know, in the green room, they'll have a couple snacks there mm -hmm. for you. That's real nice. Maybe a Diet Coke or two. Uh, it's another one, you know, you get actually, actually get to go on camera and enjoy something. But usually the food is just, it visually looks cool, mm -hmm. but it's not really a, a good experience. Whereas yeah. here, everything is is hot and it's like delicious. And this has been really, really fun. And I appreciate the, um, I don't feel like I, I've been shamed at all. I've, I've been encouraged to live my best life. <laughs> I hope I don't die, but if I do, uh, I'm gonna die full and, and, and big smile. I mean, pull me out of the windshield like, God, this guy's mangled. Look at, look at smile though. Wait, <laughs> man, that guy, this guy looks happy. <laughs> Why does he smell yeah, like chili he, and pastrami? He smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Please, man, dig in. All right, so uh, I'm gonna approach this a certain way because I know this is gonna be real messy. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna cut my hot dog in half because my goal is to uh, be able to enjoy as much of it as possible and not look like I'm making a porno. Huh? So uh, yeah, uh -oh. there we go. The hot dog got stuck in the middle. It's what? It's really hot. The hot no, 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 it's stuck. It's oh, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. Well, I saw how you were eating it. So yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I am not surprised. I'm definitely gonna need a lot of mm. napkins after this, but here we go. Salud. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got it in my nose, but I think I got it in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna talk about the beginning of your comedy career because you took a really huge leap of faith when you just quit your day job. At, was it LA Cellular before it was at and mm, Yeah, yes. Um, sorry. <laughs> I used to sell cell phones back in 1997. That's early days. I know. I was working in sales. I was making about five grand a month in 1997. I, I was doing so good, I even paid for my own cable. I could have <laughs> stole, stole cable. Easy. Yeah, yeah. easy, I knew a guy. But I was like, nah, you know what? I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay, it's the least I could do. But uh, life was good, man. And I had just bought a car and uh, so yeah, to, to give that up, to pursue comedy and people say, you know, cause at the beginning I was able to do both. Mm, and I had yeah. the energy to do both, but then you had to hang out. And so sometimes I'd be hanging out until three, four o'clock in the morning. And then I had mm -hmm. to be at work at seven. And so rinse, repeat, you do that enough times and it catches up to you. Yeah. So I quit my job thinking that I could make it. And I found out very quickly that it's not as easy as it looks. Sure. But once I quit, I refused to get my job back because I could have gotten my job back. What do you think would have happened if you would have kept that job? Like, I, I know it's kind of stupid to have that retrospective and look back and guess, but do you think you would have still wound up in the same position had you kept the cell phone job? Financially, I think I'd be okay. Mm. I don't know that I'd be this happy. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So for all those people out there, because uh, again, this is a thing that so many people you talk to, especially in LA, they're like, this is what I do for work. This is what I'm passionate about. And they have these fantasies of leaving that day job to pursue their passion, whether it's crocheting on Etsy, making earrings, doing comedy, screenwriting, whatever. Do you think that you could like ethically advocate, just like screw it, no soul God, no safety net, quit your job and pursue that passion? So a question that I, I get a lot is, um, what was your biggest break? Mm -hmm. And um, when I tell people my biggest break was the first time I decided to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Once I got up on that stage and I made the, this is, this is day one. Once I made up my mind that I was gonna do it, I was gonna go all the way. Mm -hmm. And so I did bet on myself. And of course, everybody said no. Yeah. You know, and family was, you know, family is as supportive as they can be, but when they mm -hmm. don't think that you're going in the right direction sure. and they see you giving up a job that's paying you that much a month and they see how good you're well mm -hmm. off. I had benefits. I never had benefits. I feel that. You know, so uh, uh, day one, there's different things that you can invest in in life. You can invest in stocks. You can invest in real estate. You can invest in this or that. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing you can invest in is yourself. And if you feel strongly enough that you that something's a passion, uh, the only thing standing in your way is you. Yeah. And so bet on yourself is what I say. And you think even if that doesn't work out, because obviously there's only so many spots to be a famous comedian, if it doesn't work even out. If it, even if you fail, mm. you still win because it's a learning experience. Yeah. You are, it's, it's tr you know, you're, you're uh, trial and error. Mm. So that's why whenever I see people make it right away, I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> not, gonna, that's not gonna go well. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna go well, because you have to establish that foundation, that struggle. You need to have that internal struggle that I know what it took to get here, so yeah. I will act accordingly in order to try to maintain it. 
do you think you take appropriate time to actually reflect on your happiness now that you have like reached what I'm sure is like a higher mountaintop than you would have thought when you started out in comedy? Do you take time to actually reflect or do you just keep moving forward to the next thing? Um, I do a combination of the two. Um, it's not more one than the other. It's mm -hmm. just, it's always like, all right. Cause I'm always go, go, go. Yeah. I mean, you know, I never know where I'm at, but uh, my favorite time to reflect is uh, I'll, I'll go out late at night and I'll take my little drives. I like mm -hmm. taking drives at night. I'll get the dogs in the car. We'll drive out to the hat, go get some pastrami fries. And you know, I will reflect. I will just yeah. sit and listen to music and I'm like, wow, okay. You know, and I think about things that either I'd like to do or things that I did in the past that I enjoyed that maybe I want to find a way to get into again. Mm. What's one thing you did in the past that you want to get into again? I'm, I think part of me is afraid to just go out in public, not only because of COVID reasons, I'm, I'm pretty much past that, but mm. my privacy is already, it's, it's gone whenever mm. I go out somewhere. I miss people actually not knowing who I am so that I could have a real mm. conversation with someone who's not like fangirling. If the point of success is to be happy, it sounds like you've gotten to the point where you are so successful that it's almost negatively affecting your happiness if you can't even go out in public. Is it like a golden prison? It is, it is It is very much like a golden prison. The performing, I, I you know, for, for me, I consider success to be doing something that, that you enjoy mm -hmm. doing. Uh, the comedy part, me getting up on stage, it's my favorite thing in the world to do is to get up on stage and make people laugh. Other things that are cool, that are part of that, that fall into that, that umbrella, acting, whether it's on television or film or doing radio or, or doing interviews, doing, you know, shows. If it didn't happen, I'm okay. If it does happen, it's cool, but sometimes it's annoying. But I enjoy it. I do love doing that. Um, but I also miss uh, having normal situations. I think people want to have a problem to solve. I killed that whole chili dog, man. I'm in and I'm You're on. What's that you on? Am I ahead of you and on you, And you talk the whole time. Woo! No, I think everybody wakes up. It's like up. a grenade. Everybody wants <laughs> <laughs> Try to say some profound shit. No, I have nothing. You just eat chili dogs, you drink Diet Coke, one day you die. Some people make billions of people happy. Some people have a lovely niche audience on YouTube, and we love you very much. I have not, not enjoyed any of this. This has been incredible from beginning to right now. The only complaint I have is I only have one soda left. That Get more sodas! Only, that is the only complaint I have. Uh, Bring the Diet Coke fire hose! Uh, Gabriel, for your final course right now, we have a key lime pie. We were gonna make it ourselves, but we got a better person to make it. This is from uh, Nicole Rucker's Fat and Flour, best key lime pie in the city, in my humble opinion. And then four scoops of Rocky Road ice cream. Uh, dig in, what's the deal with key lime pie? Just a fan? So, uh, in 1999, I did a joke where I talked about how much I love chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. And that joke, I guess hit so hard that from then on, people started bringing me chocolate cakes to the shows. Yeah. Even to this date, I still get people bringing me <laughs> chocolate cakes. And if you had to figure out how many cakes I've received over the years, it's it's in the thousands. Jeez. I have received thousands of chocolate cakes over the last 20 years. You know, it's like I tell people, imagine it's been your birthday every single day <laughs> since 1999. And every day, two friends give you a cake. That's how much cake it's been. And people wonder why I'm diabetic. <laughs> yeah, I am trying to make you happy. That's that's what happened. I try to make you happy. Your life is so beautiful and, so, and filled with joy, yeah, but then it's also this kind weird of like funhouse nightmare. <laughs> There's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer goes to hell and the devil's force feeding him like donuts the whole day and he just keeps eating it. That's what this reminds that's, me of. That's, that's, that's kind of in the right vein. So the reason for the key lime pie is because after chocolate cake, I mean, I no longer, I mean, I'll eat it, but it's not like it's my, I love it anymore. So I went in the complete opposite direction and it I found is. out that I love key lime pie. I love that tartness. I love the sourness. And, and that's a beautiful metaphor. Like when one thing sours for you, you flip to the opposite, you mm -hmm. know? It's just a dance and goddamn key lime pie is great. It's so good. Oh God, you weren't lying. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. This is delicious. Yeah. You've talked about being deliberately non-controversial and you said to younger comedians that you should try and do that to try and like reach the biggest amount of audience. But now that you've reached all these heights, do you ever just want to say screw it? Like, are we getting like a dark fluffy era? Cause I would love to see it. I'm a huge fan of professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. In wrestling, you have the baby face mm -hmm. and you have the heel, okay? The baby face forever was Hulk Hogan, okay? Yep. Growing up in the 80s, he's the, he's the ultimate good guy. Say your prayers, take your vitamins, just, mm -hmm. you know, real American brother and just everybody loved him. I loved him. And the craziest thing was he was the good guy for a very long time. And um, he reinvented himself by all of a sudden becoming the biggest bad guy ever. Mm -hmm. He did a thing called a heel turn. Yeah. 
everybody was like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. That's crazy. And people loved him even more. Yeah. For being the bad guy. 100%. So part of me feels like, all right, all these years of trying to keep a show that's friendly, keep a show that everyone can enjoy and, and come out to, staying away from politics, staying away from religion, staying away from things that are divisive. Mm. Part of me feels like, you know what? Yeah, one night, maybe maybe Fluffy doesn't show up to the club. Maybe it's just Gabe. And Gabe is pissed. <laughs> you know? And so I thought about it. Because people say, oh, well, your show's very fluffy. No pun intended. But yeah. <laughs> if you think of comedy as like a very personal art form, you know, then like, do you think that you're repressing it all like this dark side of yes. you? Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. And I think that that would be an art form in itself to be able to find a way to creatively express myself and, and get these thoughts out without them coming across like, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Because there are every single day there's something that bothers me. I'm like, do I talk about that? And I'm like, mm, you know? If money is a main driver, at what point is enough enough? Because I mean like, listen, I ain't know your personal finances. I barely know how money works. I'm one of those like stupid people who just knows that I can pay my rent so I'm chill. But I imagine like you got enough to take care of yourself, your family, your family's family for a while. Does that keep you chasing? I definitely um, am addicted because I do feel like based on what I think I need, mm -hmm. I definitely have enough to stop. Sure. The only reason why I buy dumb things is because I can't. Sure. I yeah. don't need it. I wish I, I had more experiences than, mm -hmm. than actual physical things. And usually that requires me to get away from the thing that's generating all the money, generating the attention, generating the opportunities. And so that's, you know, you, you become part of the machine. You've associated like monetary success or success in terms of, of fame, achieving all these things and acquiring these things as like, that is what self-worth is. You know, is that is that fair to say? Yeah, it's very, very, that's, mm -hmm. that sounds pretty accurate. So that's if you're not like achieving, then you What am I are, doing? Yeah, of course. I had no idea this shit was gonna get so deep. Let's I'm go like, to, whoa. <laughs> let's go to Modesto or something. This got so deep, I, I stopped eating ice cream. I'm like, yeah, man, I nah, think, bro. Yeah, I'm good, man. You know, <laughs> go on the road, it's been a tough all these years. <laughs> I forgive you, Gabriel. Like, I forgive okay. you. It's okay. It's not your fault. I got ice cream in your shirt. Somebody. I don't care. I was going to nail myself uh, anyway. You ready to get in the lightning round? We'll go right home. Let's do it, man. I got a whole new bottle of Diet Coke mm. for you. We're bringing out the big guns now. We couldn't afford the Diet Coke fire hose. Uh, Burbank Fire Marshal said he wouldn't let us do it again. Other than me, who's the one person dead or alive you don't want to share your actual last meal with? Who I don't want to share? Yeah, who's your least favorite person dead or alive? Man, it's like all the all the uh, genocidal world leaders. There's so many to choose from. There's the one person you don't want to spend your last meal with. I would say the person's name, but I don't want to give them any any credibility or any uh, platform or, or mention just because I don't think they deserve it. Yeah, but they know who they are. Take that, J.K. Rowling. They know they know who they are. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of people just be like, oh, when I gave him that chocolate cake right? on the show, I didn't know he. Now, now, now the fact that I said they know who they are, now I'm gonna be like, like, be like 50 people. It's like, oh my god, he's talking. He's clearly talking about a lot me. Of weird text. What's the one song you'd want to do a Magic Mike strip tease to? The one song that always gets me like uh, in the car, kind of like you know, yeah, a little horned up. Remember CNC Music Factory, back in the day. Uh, Vaguely. Gonna uh, gonna make you sweat. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you'll be sweating, man. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll be sweating for I'll sure. I'll be sweating right there in the chair. All right. Uh, who's the dream eulogizer at your funeral? Ooh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Fluffy was a was a good man. <laughs> he spent his days bringing laughter to the world. Boy, did he love chili. Boy, did he love chili cheese. <laughs> Who plays you in the biopic about your life? That's easy. Um, Rico Rodriguez, uh, the little kid from Modern Family. Oh my God. We've already talked about this. I already told him, dude, when I die, you gotta play you gotta play me. I give the green light, the blessing, it's you. And you know where he's gonna promote it? Right in this seat. That's nice. <laughs> right in this seat. Come on the show. All right, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear is that that I wasted time. That I just you know, that it was all for nothing kind of a thing where it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it's 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 weird. Like I always feel like I'm dreaming. I always feel like everything that's happening to me right now is a dream. I'm like, there's no way this is real. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like I have multiple Snoop Dogg stories. I got stories about being around the world. All my story, you know, all these different people, all these different things that I've done. It's so surreal. And my fear is that it's all a dream. What if I told you, Gabriel, it all has been a dream? Nice, right? Three, two, one, I release right. it. <laughs>
Now I'm in a Kmart parking lot. Like, <laughs> I got the vest on. I got the, the, the shopping cart. Like, <laughs> Finally, are you happy? I'm very happy right now. I'm very happy right now. This has been an incredible experience. I mean, we've been shooting the, the shooting the ship, shooting the ship, uh, and and enjoying amazing food. And this has been a, such a wonderful, fun, uh, different conversation. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to say that I've I've done many many interviews, and I feel like most of them are the same. Mm -hmm. And this is very different. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Very that. very different. And uh, if this is in fact my last meal, uh, it was fun, bro. <laughs> Thank you. Gabriel, if nice. you have any last words, deliver them right to that camera. It's been fun. Uh, find what makes you happy and try to do as much of it as possible. Um, it's, it's your life and only your life. And uh, everybody's going to tell you how to live it. At the end of the day, you got to do what brings you the most amount of joy. And what's going to bring me the most amount of joy right now is finishing this Rocky Road ice cream. And then getting on the freeway. Wish me luck getting home. Ooh, Gabriel Truly, thank you so much. You can find his Netflix special, Stadium Fluffy, on Netflix over at netflix.com slash Netflix. That's not brought to you by Netflix. Just Google Fluffy. Um, I apparently own the word Fluffy. So if you Google the word Fluffy right now, I don't care what search engine you're on, I am the first thing that will pop up mm. and I challenge you to try it. I come up before quilts, comforters, cotton candy, bunny rabbits, anything fluffy you can think of, I'm still number one. Try it. That's See right. what happens. Google fluffer and then go to Craigslist. Well, hey, um, <laughs> fluffer's a different profession. Very respectable, but uh, yeah, very different. Fair enough. Very different. See y'all next time. Wrist up your next fire meal with the Mythical Kitchen Utensil Set. Available now at mythical.com.